What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is CJ with Out of Bounds DFS and in today's video we're going to be looking at the prize picks board for NBA tonight. Got a medium sized slate on the board. It's March 16th, a little bit after 12 p.m. here on the East Coast. So just keep in mind that the projections you're going to see in today's video, both on prize picks and on our reference site, Roto Grinders, will change throughout the day as news breaks and things like that. So if this is your first time on the channel, welcome to Out of Bounds DFS. On this channel, we talk all things single player daily fantasy sports. Right now, our main focus is prize picks and NBA, and we've been having some fantastic success. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, definitely do do so now. There's about 48, 49% of you who watch these videos that haven't subscribed. So if you do watch my videos on a regular basis, just double check, make sure that you are subscribed and notifications are turned on so you don't miss any of my content. Now, I did mention that we're having some success in NBA and last night was a great night for a lot of us in the Discord channel. So if you're not a member of the Discord, I'll leave a link for the Discord down in the description of this video. But many of us, especially the ones who are premium prize picks members, uh, had a great, great night. If you go over to the Winner Circle channel, you'll see what I'm talking about. Tons of winning screenshots, talking about hundreds and even thousands of dollars won. So fantastic night last night playing NBA prize picks. A great sign of hopefully things to come. So without further ado, let's start talking about some of the injury news real quick. And then we'll start getting into some of the fantasy point. Uh, breakdown here for NBA tonight. Mark Gasol is going to be out for the Los Angeles Lakers, as is Anthony Davis. Clint Capella is questionable, dealing with some left heel pain. John Wall is going to be out. Joel Embiid also out for the 76ers. Bam Adebayo is going to be probable. He makes his return to the Miami Heat tonight. He's missed the last few games. Christian Wood is getting closer to returning for the Houston Rockets, but is still doubtful for tonight. CJ McCollum. Boy, have we missed CJ McCollum. We loved taking the over at the start of this NBA season on CJ McCollum, especially when he was projected around 36 fantasy points. It just was working out for us night in and night out. So it's good to see him back. Al Horford is going to be out for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Alfred Payton, doubtful for the Knicks. Darius Basley, out for OKC. Lou Dort, questionable for OKC. Daniel House, out. Questionable for the Houston Rockets. Malik Beasley is out, continues to be out due to a suspension. Derrick Rose, doubtful for the Knicks. Cam Reddish, out for the Hawks. Eric Gordon, out for the Houston Rockets. Kevin Love, doubtful. He did make a brief return, ended up going out with an injury, and uh, didn't come back. So Jordan McLaughlin is out for Minnesota. And finally, Ben McLemore is questionable for the Houston Rockets. So the Rockets are very, very banged up in case you haven't noticed. So that's going to do it for the injury news. And with that out of the way, we could start talking about tonight's prize picks NBA slate. So the very first game on the board is going to be the Utah Jazz facing off against the Boston Celtics. This game tips off at 7.40 p.m. So a slightly later start time than usual. Normally these games typically get started at 7 o'clock or 7.10 on prize picks. Tonight, 7.30 or 7.40 on prize pick. So, very first guy uh, that we're looking at here is Rudy Gobert. He's joined by Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley. And then on the Boston side of things, we've got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker. So, let's go ahead and start looking at this game here. Well, you look at the game totals and they're pretty healthy overall. You got almost 230 combined points here. So, loving what I'm seeing there. And uh, the spread is pretty competitive here. Just a four-point spread. Utah, the four-point road favorite. So looking at the matchups here, let's see who is in a good spot for a potential over type of play. And the first guy that jumps out is going to be Donovan Mitchell. Now he's projected at 40 points today on prize picks. They got him at 40.16 over on Roto Grinders. But this is a matchup that could be very good for Mitchell here. Is uh, The Boston Celtics, they're allowing over... 49 and a half fantasy points per game to combo guards, which is what they classified Donovan Mitchell as, as a combo guard on Roto Grinder. So this could be a good spot for him to potentially go over 40 fantasy points. Now let's look at his recent game logs and see what he's been up to. 35 and a half, that puts him under. 51.6 puts him over. 27.8 under. 50.4 over and 26 under. So you can kind of see this little pattern starting to form here where he's got an under and over and under and over and an under. So what would that mean? That would mean tonight could be a over for him. And I do like the way things are shaping up here. 
uh, for Donovan Mitchell. As I mentioned, game totals and spread looking very, very good for him, as is the matchup. Now, he's playing almost 34 minutes per game, 1.15 fantasy points per minute, and his usage rating is at 31.89, almost 32. So very good, very high usage. And uh, I'm liking the way things are setting up here for a potential Donovan Mitchell over. Let's see who else is standing out tonight. Uh, Kemba Walker, he is a guy who could potentially go over in this matchup. He's projected for 32 over on Roto Grinders. He's at 32.42, so they do like a slight over on Kemba Walker. Now, let's take a look at his recent game logs and see has he been going over 32 or under 32. Well, you can see here it's been a bit of a mixed bag. In his last five games, he went over, over, under, under, and under. So, not very good in his last three. He's got three unders, and he's got two overs in his last five games. So, been a difficult guy to predict lately, but tonight he's expected to play about 33 minutes. What's working in his favor and why he could be a potential over candidate is that in this matchup here against Utah, Utah is allowing almost 39 fantasy points per game, which is Seven points higher than his projection of 32 over on prize picks, but he has been struggling, so fair warning. This is not a home run or a lock by any means, but there is some upside here for Kimball Walker in this matchup. So one fantasy point per minute and a usage rating of 27 and a half. Not bad whatsoever. So let's keep moving on down the line here and seeing who else makes for a potential good play for an over if there are any more. Hmm. Uh, that looks like about it for the overs. Now we can start talking about maybe some guys that might go under. Now, Jason Tatum, he's been kind of a, another guy that's been tough to project. He's at 44 right now on prize picks, 40.13 on Roto Grinder. So they like him to go under by almost four points here. Let's look at his game logs and see what that 44 has been doing for him. So in his last five, you can see he's went under and he's got an over, over, under, under. So he's been up there at 40 plus fantasy points, but has only went over 44 just twice. So it's been tough for uh, Jason Tatum. Actually, I take that back. I have to retract one of these games here, this one right here, because you see the team that he was playing? That's Team LeBron. This was the All-Star game. I don't know why they have this in his game logs, but let's throw that one out and rewind. So he's got 50, 30, 51, 42, and 40, but still, two games where he's went over, three games where he's went under, so the under has been the way to go on Jason Tatum. Now, why the under might be the play is the fact that Utah does a pretty good job here against versatile forwards such as Jason Tatum, limiting them to just 33.5 fantasy points per game, which is quite a bit lower than his projection of 44. So an under could be the way to go here for Tatum. Now, he is putting up 1.23 fantasy points per minute and has a usage rating of over 30. So those things are looking quite nice for him. So there you have it. A potential under for Jason Tatum. Other guys that could potentially go under, you got Rudy Gobert at 41. He's at 40 over on prize picks. They are over on Roto Grinders, so they like the under on Rudy Gobert there. Uh, moving down the line here, Jalen Brown's been a guy who's also kind of been struggling. He's at 38 right now. They got him at 34.73 over on Roto Grinders. If we look at his recent game logs, you can see what I mean. He has failed to go over 38 in five straight games. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks like a really strong indicator that we should be taking the under on 38 for Jalen Brown. Not to mention that Utah limits scoring wings to just 26 fantasy points per game. So I think everything is lining up for a Jalen Brown under here. I think he makes for a very good underplay over on prize picks tonight. But enough about that game. Overall, though, pretty good totals, pretty competitive spread. So, you know, for the most part, I think this should be a, a good place to look in terms of uh, fantasy upside and potential here with all the points being what they are. So let's move along and go to the next game. We got the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Miami Heat. We got the return of Bam Adebayo, as I mentioned at the top of the video. He's returning after a few games away from the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler's probably saying, Whew. Thank you. I need some help because Jimmy Butler has been carrying this Miami Heat squad. Joining Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo on the prize picks for today is Tyler Harrow. Then on the Cleveland side, we've got Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, and Darius Garland, the normal, usual suspects for Cleveland. So let's take a look at this game and see how things are shaping up here. Well, it looks like a big time 
blowout. So got to put this one in the red zone in terms of blowout risk. It's very, very high. Miami should smoke Cleveland. Cleveland's just not good enough to compete with Miami. Let's just call it what it is. You're looking at about a 10, 11 point spread here and uh, not a whole lot of points being scored from either side of this game. So let's start taking a look at some of the guys that have the potential to go over in this matchup. First guy that stands out to me is Tyler Harrow, point guard for the Miami Heat. Now he's listed as a combo guard over on Roto Grinders. They like him to go under and you know, you can't really blame him being that the uh, totals and spread are what they are, but uh, this is a great matchup for him. Combo guards against the Cleveland Cavaliers scoring over 52 fantasy points per game this season. So let's dig into his game logs real quick and see how the 26 has been treating Tyler Harrow. He's went over, way under, big over there, under, and over. So three overs, two unders in his last five games. Any previous game logs against Cleveland? No siree, Bob. So we can move ahead to minutes where he's expected to play about 28 tonight. I already mentioned the matchup is very juicy for him. 0.89 fantasy points per minute and a usage rating of over 22. Very good for Tyler Harrow, I'd probably lean toward taking the over in this matchup. Another guy that stands out, well, I should say guys, Darius Garland, combo guards against Miami Heat, averaging over 50 fantasy points per game. Another guy that stands out here is Colin Sexton, who is at 33.89. He is another guy who is classified as a combo guard. So again, over 50 fantasy points per game allowed by this Miami Heat squad. Now, I do have some hesitancy in taking the overs whenever Cleveland is expected to just score 98.75 points. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't feel so comfortable about taking the overs, but the matchup is fantastic for both of these guys. Now, Colin Sexton, he's at 35 on prize picks, 33.89 on Roto Grinders. So they're liking the under is RG. Darius Garland, he's at 28 on prize picks. 28.76 on Roto Grinders. So they like the slight over for Darius Garland here. So some interesting ways to go there. Now let's see who else stands out. We mentioned Bam Adebayo. He's at 40 on Roto Grinders. They got him at 39.68. I'm sorry, 40 on prize picks, 39.68 over on Roto Grinders. So they like a slight under on Bam today. And, uh, you know, with him being uh, back for the first time in uh, how many games has he missed? Well, he hasn't played since, what, March 2nd? So you're looking at like almost two weeks. Two weeks he's missed uh, of basketball here for this Miami Heat squad. He may come back with a little bit of rust. You just never know when a guy is returning from a long layoff like that. So I'd probably take the under on Bam Adebayo here. Cleveland, not anybody to really... Uh, be worried about in terms of slowing down versatile bigs. They allow over 35 fantasy points per game to guys like Bam Adebayo. So not really scared of the matchup. I'm more scared of the rust. Is he going to get a full run of minutes? Is he going to be limited? We just don't know. So it's kind of a situation for me that's a bit sketchy. Probably one that is best avoided. I don't think I want to touch Bam Adebayo and go there at all today. Otherwise, I think that's going to about do it. This is just an ugly game. It's looking like a blowout, and it's also looking like there's not very many points. So I'd probably lean toward the under on a lot of these guys, unless they're very high usage guys, guys who are putting up tons of fantasy points per minute. I'd be a little bit more hesitant on taking the under guys like Jimmy Butler and so on. So let's move on to the next game here. We've got the New York Knicks versus the Philadelphia 76ers. And I don't know if you guys caught it last night, but Julius Randle left the game against the Brooklyn Nets. One unhappy camper, let's just say. So could he come back tonight against this Philadelphia 76ers squad playing with some extra motivation, playing with a big old chip on his shoulder? I think he does. I think he has a pretty good game tonight. But let's take a look and see how this game is shaping up. Not a ton of points here. When you look at the game totals, we got Philadelphia with 112, New York 105.5. So can't say that this is a green. I can't even put it in yellow. I'd probably have to put this in the orange, honestly, in terms of blowout risk. I don't know that this game stays competitive. And if it does, for how long? You know, this could be over by the third quarter. We just don't know here. But of course, Philadelphia is going to be out uh, without Joel Embiid. So it's going to be all Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, and their role players. So we got Ben Simmons, Toby on the board, and we got Seth Curry as that third man for Philadelphia. 
New York, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and Emmanuel Quickly, who paid off for a lot of you guys who took him in full game fantasy points and who took him in real life points. I think he ended up having a pretty good game last night for most of you. All right, so with that out of the way, let's start looking at who makes for a good overplay here. Well, Tobias Harris is a guy that I've already mentioned. He is projected at 38 on prize picks. They got him up at 41 on Roto Grinders. Very, very interesting here. So let's take a look at Tobias Harris's recent game logs. All right, so going back here to February 25th, that's his fifth game, 14.4. Big time under on tonight's projection of 38. And he comes back here after missing a couple games, drops 43, so that would be good enough for an over. Then he goes under, under, and finally has a pretty big bounce back game in his last game, which was against the Spurs, dropping over 52 fantasy points. So fantastic over there. So in total, his last five games, he's only went over twice, under in three of those games. No previous game logs here against the Knicks. Let's move ahead to the minutes where, he, where he's expected to play 36. Versatile forward now. He's going against this Knicks team. The Knicks allow over 32 fantasy points per game to versatile forward. So um, while it's not a plus matchup in terms of this average being lower than where he's projected tonight on prize picks, I still think that there is some room here for Tobias Harris to have a good game. This is two games and three nights for him playing over 33 minutes per game, 1.12 fantasy points per minute, and a usage rating of over 23. Of course, those numbers will go up without Joel Embiid in the lineup. So I do like the way things are shaping up here for Tobias Harris to potentially go over 38 fantasy points. Let's see if there's anybody else that has the potential to go over. Um, well, I will just point out Emmanuel quickly here because... He is at 27 on prize picks. They've got him at 31.07 over on Roto Grinder. So they like him to go over by about four points. So he makes an interesting play. One thing I will point out that's working against him is the fact that Philadelphia limits shooting wings to just 22 fantasy points per game. Not only that, but this is a back-to-back -back and three games in four nights for Emmanuel Quickly and the Knicks. So something to be mindful of when taking the over on Quickly. Don't be so quick to click the over. Just something to think about. Otherwise, um, Seth Curry, he's projected at 26. They got him all the way down at 23.48 on Roto Grinders. They like the under. And shooting wings, they don't typically do too hot against this Knicks team, averaging just 22.1 fantasy points per game. So he is a candidate for an under tonight. Otherwise, not a whole lot here that I'm liking. Julius Randle projected for 45 uh, versatile bigs against the 76ers, limited to just 21.2 fantasy points. But you have to remember, there will be no Joel Embiid in the lineup, who is a big presence, obviously, down in the paint. Without him, they're going to be looking to Tony Bradley, Dwight Howard, to hopefully try and slow Julius Randle down. Good luck. Julius Randle's having a fantastic season. I don't know if they're going to be so successful in this case, they like the slight over on Julius Randle at this 44. So let's move along here and talk about the next game with the Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Chicago Bulls. This game tips off at 8, 10 p.m. We've got the likes of SGA, uh, yeah, Alexis Pokusevsky. We'll call him... Poku, because that's what they call him in the Discord chat. And then Lugent, Lugent, Lug, Dort, he's Dort, we'll just call him Dort. And then on the Chicago side, we got Zach Levine, Lori Markinen, and Kobe White, much easier names for me to pronounce. So let's take a look at this game here. Chicago, five and a half point favorites at home versus OKC. Pretty good uh, total here, 225 and a half combined points. Um, so the game looks to be somewhat high scoring, but also very competitive overall. Uh, Chicago, I would say, is the more talented team. So I definitely agree with this line here that they should be the favorites in, in this game here. So let's move into some of the guys that I like maybe to go over tonight. First guy that's jumping out is Kobe White. He's projected at 25, which is a bit down. Now, he there was news recently that he was going to be coming off of the bench for the Chicago Bulls. Maybe they're doing that in order for him to come off the bench and give a spark for this Bulls team. 
Um, I kind of like that play actually in terms of uh, the strategy behind that, but let's see how he's been performing lately. They got him as a slight under tonight. And uh, you can see in his last five games, 33, 33, 25, 25, 25. So he's actually went over in five straight games. Now his last three, he has barely went over just by a little bit, 25.4, 25.1, and 25.3. So that's all it takes is 0.1 over whatever his projection is to get you there if you're looking at taking the over here. Now his minutes... 27 in his last game, 33, 24, 32, 37. So the minutes are kind of up and down, a little bit of instability there in terms of how many minutes he's getting per night, but uh, I wouldn't be too worried. I'd say at least 25 minutes should be in the works for him. And Roto Grinders agrees they've got him projected at 27 minutes. Now, why I like Kobe White for an over here is that combo guards against OKC eat. In other words, they're scoring almost 50 fantasy points per game on average. So loving the upside here for Kobe White to go over 25 once again. This is two games and three nights for him. He's playing about 33 minutes per game. <coughs> Excuse me. 0.87 fantasy points per minute and his usage rating is over 23. So I like Kobe White as an over candidate tonight. Another guy that's standing out to me is SGA. Now I think he started the day off at about 42 fantasy points. He is now up to 44. So people must have been clicking the over enough for prize picks to jack him up a little bit <clears throat> so you can see here that on roto grinders they got him at 44 as well 44.41 to be exact not only that but combo guards in this matchup they typically average about 44.26 fantasy points per game so that 44 number is looking pretty rock solid from all things that i'm seeing here now, in his last five games, it's been a little bit of an up and down bumpy ride for SGA. So you could see back here on February 27th against Denver, he drops 33, which is an under, 24.1 and under. And he comes back and drops two overs based on tonight's projection. He misses a game here against the Knicks. But then in his last game against Memphis, 37.3. Good game, but not great. Another under for him there. So three unders, two overs in his last five just in case you were wondering. Now, his minutes tonight are at 34. I already mentioned the matchup is a good one. He plays about 34 minutes per game, so 34 sounds appropriate. 1.18 fantasy points per minute, and his usage rating is over 28. Very good number. He's the uh, unquestioned, undoubted leader here of OKC, their most talented player. So he's going to be heavily involved and have to be in order for OKC to stand a chance against the Chicago Bulls team. Now, another guy that we haven't talked a ton about that looks like he's in a good spot to potentially go over is Laurie Markin, and he's at 31. His projection on Roto Grinders is down at 26.62. Now, the reason that I say he is in a good spot to potentially go over is the fact that versatile forwards against OKC average about 39 fantasy points per game. And without Al Horford in there, uh, they're just not a uh, solid team down in the paint. So I think that there's some upside here for Laurie Markin to feast. But let's take a look at his recent game logs and see what he's been up to. So you can see he missed a ton of games, came back on March 11th, and he's played in three games since then, dropping 29.8, which puts him under, 28.2 puts him under, and 28.9 puts him under. So, so far, since his return, the under has been the way to go here with Laurie Markkinen. The minutes are definitely going up, though. You can see his first game back, he only played about 27 minutes. Then he comes back and plays 33 and 32, getting about five or four minutes in his last couple of games. So I'm liking the way that the minutes are trending up for him. And I think that this matchup here, again, without Al Horford, could be a potentially good one for Laurie Markkinen. Otherwise, I think we start moving down the list here. We start moving into territory where these guys could make for good under candidates. Someone like Zach Levine, who is projected at 43 on prize picks versus OKC. He's down at 40.85 on Roto Grinders. Scoring wings have been held in check for the most part by this OKC Thunder team. They're allowing just 24 and a half fantasy points per game to scoring wings. So the under on Zach Levine could be the way to go. Otherwise, not really interested in trying to figure out the puzzle that is Dort or the puzzle that is, uh, who else they got on the board here? Uh, yeah, I mean, Pat, Poku, is that what we're calling him? Poku. 
I'm not interested in trying to figure out if this guy is worth taking the over or under. But, I mean, one thing that jumps out to me is he is projected for 31 on prize picks. They got him at 25 over on Roto Grinder. So, if you believe in that sort of thing, well, then take the under on Pokemon. Anyways, enough about that game. It's looking pretty ugly overall. Probably not going to have a ton of exposure to anybody on either side of that one. So let's move on to the next game, which has much more exciting cast of characters here. We got the Atlanta Hawks taking on the Houston Rockets. On the Atlanta side, Trey Young, Clint Capella, whose uh, availability is in doubt, we'll say, at the timing of this video. And then John Collins, of course. Victor Oladipo, Kevin Porter Jr., who's been playing very well since joining the Houston Rockets. And... Kenyon Martin's son, Kenyon Martin Jr. So we got a couple of juniors on the board for the Houston Rockets. Let's take a look at the game totals and spread on this one. We got Atlanta, pretty big favorites here on the road, 117, Houston 108. So you're talking about a nine point spread here. Definitely gonna put this one in the red zone for me uh, as a high blowout risk here. And if that's the case, I'd imagine somebody like Victor Oladipo, who has been getting a lot of rest lately. He doesn't play a ton of back to backs and stuff. I expect a guy like him to get benched early if this game does get out of hand in the uh, uh, first, second, or third quarter. But let's go ahead and move along and start talking about guys that stand out to me as potential overplays. Now, Trey Young hasn't been a guy who's been going over with regularity here lately, but he's projected at 46 today on prize picks, 45.34 on Roto Grinders. What's working out for him and in his favor is the fact that the Houston Rockets are the most generous team in the entire league to combo guards like Trey Young. They're giving up over 58, almost 59 fantasy points per game. So I'd say that there's a lot of upside and a high ceiling. If somehow Houston makes this a competitive game, Trey Young has the potential to go over. Now looking at his last five games, 31.6, that puts him under. 52.8, that's a big time over. 49, that's a pretty big over as well. 41.7 and 23 puts him under. So in his last five, he's only went over twice, having three unders in that five-game game log. With that in mind, we can look at his minutes where he's expected to play 34. Love the matchup here on paper. 34 and a half minutes per game for the season. 1.27 fantasy points per minute and a usage rating of over 34. So love what I'm seeing in Trey Young here. If he can keep... or if Houston can keep this game close and competitive, then I think Trey Young's got a really good shot of going over 46 tonight. Otherwise, another guy that's sticking out is Victor Oladipo, who is projected at 40. He is at 40.43 over on Roto Grinders. Why he makes a good candidate to go over? Well, Atlanta. Uh, I mentioned Houston being the number one team in terms of points allowed per game to combo guards. Well, Guess who's number two? It's the Atlanta Hawks. They're giving up 57.85 fantasy points per game to combo guards like Victor Oladipo. Now let's just look at his game logs because they are spotty. They're like all over the place. Rarely does he play back-to-backs, but we've got enough information here to kind of make an informed decision on Victor Oladipo in this 40 fantasy point projection. So going back to his fifth game, which was back on February 26, he drops 45 there, which is good enough for an over. Misses the next game, comes back, goes under with 34, goes well over 40 with 58.9. Barely squeaks by 40 here with 40.3. He misses this game against Utah. Excuse me. Comes back against Boston for 37.2 and goes under. So in his last five games, guys, you could see that he's went over three times and under two times. So Victor Oladipo playing okay basketball, but he's just been a hard guy to figure out, a hard guy to trust. But without John Wall, without Eric Gordon... Oladipo should do much better in this matchup. He averages 1.13 fantasy points per minute and his usage rating almost at that 30 mark, putting him in an elite company. So Oladipo, good candidate to potentially go over tonight. Um, I won't spend any time talking Clint Capella, although this is kind of a revenge game as he makes his return versus this Houston Rockets team. Um, I'm sure he would like to play. I just don't know if he will, so we won't spend any time talking about him. But talking about a guy who could be playing with a chip on his shoulder and have some extra added motivation here. If you like to play narratives, Clint Capella versus his former team, Houston Rockets, there could be some added motivation for Capella to play well tonight. Um, otherwise, 
we start moving into the uh, category of guys that uh, may be candidates to go under. We got Kenyon Martin Jr., who's projected at 28. He's at 25.16 over on Roto Grinders. So they like him to go like him to go under by about three points. Uh, John Collins is another interesting guy. He is at 32. They got him at 31.88. So 31 to 32 seems appropriate for Collins. But I will say this: be ready to click the over on John Collins if Clint Capella misses this game tonight. Uh, I do like him to go over here. Houston, in case you have been living under a rock and not paying attention to the NBA this season, they don't really have any formidable big men, any guys in the paint that would slow a guy like Clint Capella or John Collins down. So I like the overs on both of those guys uh, either way. So moving on down the line here, we're going to talk Kevin Porter real quick because he's been a guy that a lot of people in the Discord have been liking, whether it be for single stats like assists or just fantasy points. They've been taking a lot of Kevin Porter, and I've been seeing his name coming up quite a bit here. So he's at 36 fantasy points tonight, 32 and a half over on Roto Grinder. So that's a pretty big under so far, three and a half points. And not to mention, this Atlanta Hawks team does a pretty good job defending three and D wings like Kevin Porter, limiting them to just 21 and a half fantasy points per game. But let's take a look at his game logs and see how he's been doing. We could see in his first two games as a member of the Houston Rockets, he smashed 42 fantasy points, 48.6 fantasy points. But then he comes crashing back down to earth, playing just 30 minutes, didn't shoot the ball very well. Victor Oladipo was active for that game, so maybe that helped kind of cut into his production somewhat. But all in all, in his last three, he's went well over in two games, and then he's went under in one game. So something to keep in mind here for KPJ. Um, otherwise he's expected to play about 33 minutes tonight, 1.15 fantasy points per minute. And his usage rating is over 29. So actually pretty good numbers when he is out on the floor, he's productive. He's a very productive guy. So there you have it on KPJ. That's going to do it for this game. Let's move on to the next one and start talking Portland Trail Blazers versus the New Orleans Pelicans. We got a lot of star power on the Portland and uh, New Orleans side of things. So Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball versus uh, Damian Lillard, Enos Cantor, Robert Covington for Portland. So let's go ahead and start looking at the game totals here because this one actually got me a little bit excited. I'm not going to lie. 238 combined points here. So ton of potential here. Ton of fantasy upside for these teams. Portland 120, New Orleans 118. You're talking about just a two-point spread. Game should stay close and competitive. So the first guy that's going to jump out to me is Damian Lillard. Now Lillard is projected at 48. If you remember in recent games, he has been at 55 fantasy points, let's just say. So he's down quite a bit. Now with the news that CJ McCollum may return, I think that's impacting Damian Lillard. And the fact that Lillard just hasn't been coming in anywhere close to that 55 fantasy projection in a lot of games here. So so far, they like the under on Lillard on Roto Grinders. But let's take a look here at his recent game logs and get a better picture of how he's been performing. So with a projection of 48 in mind, you could see that he went over here with 58. Then he's got, well, this is against Kevin Durant's team. So we're going to skip that one. 54, 51.4, so that's an over. 44 puts him under, and then 50.4 puts him over 48. So he wasn't hitting the 55 with great regularity. So prize picks has bumped him down to 48. Now against New Orleans, he did face them back on February 17th. He dropped 73.8 fantasy points. So we know what he's capable of against this Pelican squad here. So I would say that there is some potential for an upside type of game for Dame time. Um, uh, Working in his favor is the fact that the Pelicans allow over 49 and a half fantasy points per game. So this is a game where there's a potential for a ceiling type performance from Damian Lillard like we saw in his first meeting against this uh, Pelicans team. Three games and four nights for him playing over 35 minutes per game. 1.32 fantasy points per minute and a usage rating of 33.5 elite elite usage for him. Otherwise, another guy that could be in a good spot to potentially go over, Zion Williamson. He's at 44. They got him at 42.97, so 43, let's call it. So that 43 to 44 point window seems reasonable for Zion Williamson. Uh, let's look at his recent game logs and see what he's been up to. 
he went over, I'm sorry, he went, yeah, over in his uh, game here back on March 3rd with 52.3. He misses the next game. This game was against Team LeBron. We don't count that one. Since the All-Star break, he has struggled 30, 33, and 34.9. Three unders in his last three games. Now, going back here against Portland, you can see that he dropped 54.2 fantasy points. So him and Damian Lillard had fantastic games when they last met. So big time upside for both guys in this ball game here. Now moving ahead, he's expected to play 34 minutes. Versatile forwards against Portland have done fairly well. They're allowing over 36 fantasy points per game. He's playing about 32 minutes a night, 1.25 fantasy points per minute, and a usage rating of over 28. So Zion Williamson could be a guy who's in a spot here to go over 44 despite his recent struggles. He's due for a bounce back game. This is the perfect spot and opportunity, in my opinion, for him to do just that. Otherwise, moving down the line here, um, Enos Cantor, he's going to have a tough go at things here going against Steven Adams tonight. Those guys are going to be probably very physical with one another. I imagine a wrestling match breaking out. Think WWE here. Uh, these are the type of guys that get down there and just kind of brawl it out in the paint. So it'll be fun to watch those two guys, kind of a game within the game sort of thing. Um, not really looking at Enos Cantor for an over. Uh, if anything, I'd probably say that, you know, it's going to be one of those ugly type of games where I just don't want nothing to do with either one of those guys. Moving down the line here, anybody else jumping out? We got Brandon Ingram, who's in a very, um, we'll say, negative spot here. He's projected for 40 on prize picks, 39.22 on Roto Grinders. Scoring wings against Portland have not fared well. They're limiting scoring wings to just 22 fantasy points per game. So I'd probably click the under on Brandon Ingram's name here. Another guy worth possibly taking the under on would be Mr. Robert Covington, who's at 28. Now, they got him at 30 over on Roto Grinders, but uh, the Port, I'm sorry, the Pelicans have limited 3 and D wings like Robert Covington to just 21.62 fantasy points per game. So, yeah, not really someone that I'm looking to probably target whatsoever here. Just not getting a clear read on Roco. But overall, this game's got tons of points, and it's got a very good spread that I put into the green category for me. So I expect a lot of fantasy upside and potential here. Now that brings us to our last and final game. Yes, yes, we finally made it to the finish line. We've got the Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. For the T-Wolves tonight, we've got Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, Ricky Rubio, Jalen Noel. Somebody I don't think I've ever seen on the board up until this point. And then on the Lakers side, LeBron James, of course, Dennis Schroeder, Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma. They give you a lot of these, uh, we'll call them role players. I won't call them scrubs and insult them, but a lot of role players down at the bottom of the board for these late night games. So let's start talking about some of these guys and see who makes some sense here. Well, the first guy that stands out as a candidate to go over would be Dennis Schroeder. He's at 31 on prize picks. They got him at 30 over on Roto Grinders. He is a combo guard. Now, working out for Dennis Schroeder is the fact that Minnesota, very generous, giving up over 52 fantasy points per game to combo guards like Mr. Schroeder. So let's look at his recent game logs and get a better read on him. You can see in his last five, he's got an under, an under, a big over, another over, and then he drops back under again. So just two overs compared to three unders in his last five games. Um, he does have a game log against Minnesota back on February 16th, where he puts up 42.7 fantasy points, putting him well over 31. So that could be a potential indicator of things to come for Schroeder tonight. He's expected to play about 33 minutes. This is a back-to-back -back for the Lakers. For the season, he's playing over 31 minutes per game, 0.86 fantasy points per minute, and a usage rating of 22.5. Not fantastic or great numbers by any means, but solid. We'll call it solid. Another guy that stands out is Mr. Jalen Noel. Hope I'm saying that right. Noel? Maybe it's Noel. I don't know. But he's projected at, at 21 fantasy points. Now, they got him at 22.47 over on RG. Combo guards, which is what they classify Mr. Jalen Noel as. We'll just call him Noel. 
Combo guards have scored 47.17 fantasy points per game against this Lakers squad. Let's take a look at this game log because I don't know who this guy is. And to be honest, I haven't really paid much attention to the Minnesota Timberwolves this season. You can see in his last five games here, it's been a weird mix of game logs. 13 puts him well under, 11 puts him well under, but then he comes out of nowhere against New Orleans, dropping 47, puts him way over 21 and a half, and then 24.8. So his minutes are up, I will say that. They are trending up. In his last three games, he's played 24 or more minutes. So things are kind of looking up for him. He's went over in his last three games. Uh, eclipsing this 21 fantasy point projection tonight. So tonight they expect him to play about 27 minutes. We've already mentioned combo guards do well against the Lakers. Uh, 0.91 fantasy points per minute and a usage rating of over 22. Not bad, actually. Not bad. So any other guys that are standing out as guys who could potentially go over? Montrez Harrell looks like he's in a pretty good spot here. Versatile bigs against Minnesota have... Scored 34.37 fantasy points per game, so I'm liking the way that's setting up. They do have him projected to go under versus prize picks, does Roto Grinder. So he will be facing off against Carl Anthony Towns uh, in this matchup. Otherwise, um, Kyle Kuzma could be a guy who could potentially go over here. The matchup's looking pretty favorable. They got him at 28 on prize picks. He's at 27.95. Let's round up and call it 28. So both sites kind of have him in that 28 point. Uh, territory versatile forwards though against minnesota 33.29 fantasy points per game so he could be a candidate to go over tonight let's just look at his game logs real quick because i'm genuinely curious in his last five 18.2 puts him under 25.2 puts him under he misses this game but in his last three this is where he's really starting to sparkle and shine 45 42 and 34 three definitive overs versus tonight's projection of 28. So I'm liking some Kuzma over in this situation. Otherwise, yeah, you know, LeBron is LeBron. He's projected for 54 on Roto Grinders, two points higher than he is over on prize picks at 52. So, you know, he's matchup proof. We're not even going to get into the numbers on him. You kind of know what you're going to get from LeBron James at this point. Anthony Edwards, he's in a bit of a negative spot here. So don't be surprised if he goes under uh, Lakers have done a pretty good job at limiting scoring wings and their fantasy point per game outputs uh, Carl Anthony Towns another guy who could potentially go under they got him at 48 he's at 45 and a half on roto grinders they like the under on cat and going under on cat has just been working out for us whether it be a first half under whether it be a full game under going under on Carl Anthony Towns he's been one of the guys where the unders have just kept working out for us so i don't mind going under on carl anthony towns but uh yeah i think that's pretty much going to do it for today's video guys what do you think is there anybody that's standing out to you any games that you're particularly liking that you're going to be targeting players from i'd like to hear your thoughts drop a comment down in the comment section below join the discord if you haven't yet again make sure you're subscribed if you aren't we're trying to get the channel to 700 subscribers by the end of the month and we're almost there so Thank you for your continued support and good luck tonight. This is CJ for Adam Bounds DFS. And until the next one, guys, let's win some more money tonight. Peace out.